Hello and welcome back. I want to share a crochet technique with you today called wiggly crochet. I've enjoyed this technique for many years and have created dozens of wiggly crochet designs. You can use wiggly crochet to create decorative throw rugs for your home, as well as hot pads and coasters, which are great for special holidays like Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, 4th of July, Halloween, and Christmas, as well as for entertaining and playing games. And comfy wiggly crochet rugs hug your feet. If wiggly crochet looks intriguing to you and you want to learn how to do it, stay right here because I'm going to show you how. So let's get started with our wiggly crochet project. I have a hot pad and a coaster here made with the exact same pattern, but the materials are different and the sizes are different. The coaster came out to be about four inches square and the hot pad came out to be about seven inches square. For the hot pad, I used a D hook and an E hook. And I also used size three cotton thread and a sport weight cotton yarn. And a sport weight is a number two weight. For the coaster, I used a size seven hook and a size 10 hook. These are steel hooks and they're made for using thread. And I used a size 10 cotton thread for the coaster. Now, cotton is really important if you're going to be making coasters and hot pads because a hot pad, you don't want a yarn or a thread that it will melt with heat because it's to protect your table from something hot that you put on it. And with a coaster, you want cotton thread so that it absorbs the moisture in your glass that you put on top. So that's why I choose cotton for my wiggly crochet projects. Now to make wiggly crochet, there's two steps. The first step is to make the foundation mesh. And this is made with chains and double crochets. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. After you make the foundation mesh, then you put the wiggly crochet stitches on. You can see the foundation mesh on the back. And here's the edges. And these wiggly crochet stitches are sticking up from the foundation mesh. So it gives it three dimensional properties. So there's cushion in here. And this is the only crochet technique I know of that does this kind of cushioning in 3D. So it's a really cool technique to use. Let's talk about the pattern first. I have written instructions in the pattern, plus I have two charts. This chart is a symbol crochet chart showing you how to make the foundation mesh with those chains and double crochets. And this chart is a wiggly crochet chart, which is in all my wiggly crochet patterns. It shows what colors to use and where each of those colors is worked. It tells you where to start and which direction to go in. And it also includes anything special, like that pretty little bump in the middle of our coaster and hot pad. So these are all included in the pattern and you can get that free pattern on my website. I've included a link in the video description below for you. So go ahead and get that pattern. Now we're going to start with the foundation mesh because every wiggly crochet project 
starts with the foundation mesh. You have to make the foundation before you can do your wiggly crochet stitches. So we have in this project 13 mesh and each of these holes or spaces is called a mesh. We also have 13 rows high. So let's start that. Per the pattern, we start with 44 chains. And either project that you make, whether you make the coaster or the hot pad, you're going to be using the smaller of your two hooks to make the foundation mesh. I've already done my 44 chains, and you don't need to watch me do that. But in the pattern, it starts with a double crochet in the eighth chain from the hook. So we'll count back eight chains. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll do our double crochet in that eighth chain. And I always go under two loops of the chain to make it stronger. And I feel like in this foundation mesh, the strength on that bottom chain is important because you won't be working into every chain. So after that first double crochet, we're going to chain two, skip the next two chains, and do a double crochet into that third chain. And this is the repeat across the row. So I'll do it one more time. Chain two, skip two chains, and double crochet in the next chain. And I'm going to work this all the way across the row, and I will meet you when I get to the end. So here I am at the end of the row, and I'll do my last repeat of chain two, skip two, and double crochet in the next chain, which is my last chain. And here is row one completed. We have our 13 spaces and we're ready to do row two. Row two and rows three through 13 all are worked the same way. So we're going to chain five and turn. Now, the first three chains count as our double crochet at the end, and the next two chains count as our chain two space. So we'll go ahead and turn, and we're going to skip that double crochet and the next two chains and work a double crochet into the next double crochet. And you can see we've just made one mesh here. So to do the rest of the mesh across, we're going to chain two skip our two chains, and double crochet in the next double crochet. And that is our repeat across the row. And I'll work this row, and I will meet you when I get to the other end. Okay, I've gotten to the end of row two, and the last repeat is chain two, skip two chains, and double crochet in the next chain. And this will form our last mesh. And you can see we have two rows done, and we have our 13 mesh across. Now you will repeat row two for rows thir three through 13, and you'll have your mesh all completed. So let's get started on the wiggly crochet stitches, which is really the most fun in these projects. On our chart, we can see that the outside color is purple. And I always like to start from the outside on my wiggly crochet projects, because if you start in the middle, what if you get one stitch off or one mesh off in the middle? Then you've gotten all of this done and you don't have the right number of stitches around. So. Let's start with the outside, and here's the dot on the chart, and that's showing you where to start. 
and the arrow tells you this direction. So we're going to be covering up these lines, which these stitches are making the same lines as on our chart. In our pattern, it says for the outer round, we're going to join B, which is my purple, with a slip stitch in the chain five space at the beginning of row 13, which is the dot on the chart. And this is the right side facing, because row one was a right side row, and row 13 is also a right side row. And this is the beginning chain five space. So we will go ahead and join with the slip stitch there. And then the pattern says to chain three, and that counts as the first double crochet. And I like to tighten up that slip knot. Then the pattern says to work seven double crochet in the same chain space. So we will work seven double crochet in here. This, the chain three counted as our first one, so seven more will be a total of eight. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And you can see what this is doing is it's creating the two wiggly lines right here, the curve around the corner. Now the pattern says, follow arrow around, working four double crochet around each double crochet post and in each chain two space. So here is our next double crochet post. The post is the long part of the stitch below the top of the stitch. So this is the post and this is the line right here on our chart. So we're going to work four double crochet around that post. And I like to fold this back, the foundation mesh that you'll see, so that I'm not getting my hook in the wrong place. So now we have here done. And we're going to work four double crochet in this chain two space, which is right here. We're following the chart going around and around. So let's do those four. I'm folding this foundation mesh down again so that I don't get my hook in the wrong place or catch some other threads that I don't want to be caught in here. And let's look at our chart again. Here we have done all the way to here. Now we're going to go up across this post. And you can see that we're getting the three-dimensional look with these wiggly crochet stitches. And double crochets are the most common stitches used for the wiggly crochet stitches. They give it a nice depth. And here you can see that we've just gone up. So we're going to continue. We'll work four double crochets in this chain two space and around this double crochet post. And in this double, I'm sorry, this chain two space and around this double crochet post. And we keep doing that, wiggling back and forth until we get to this corner. Then at this corner, as you can see on the chart, we would do four double crochets here, and then four double crochets in this chain two space, and four double crochets around this post, and four double crochets in this chain two space. Let me show you on the finished one. Starting here, 
going across, wiggling back and forth. And they're, they're worked around here and around here, and they just keep wiggling back and forth. And this is how you work the wiggly crochet stitches following the chart, whatever chart you're following per the pattern. And you go all the way around doing your wiggly crochet stitches. When you reach the point where you began, you would simply join with a slip stitch in that third chain, which is essentially the top of your first double crochet. And then you finish that off and you start your next color. And you look for where the dot is on the chart and follow the arrow around. And yes, you can start in a different place. I just like to put dots and arrows on my chart and I like to stagger where I'm joining so that when I weave in my ends, there's not a big bulk in one area. Now this center bump is worked a little differently. And let me show you how to do that. Here you can see that I have all the wiggly stitches done on my hot pad and I'm ready for the center bump. So let's do that together. We're going to start with a slip knot on our hook and we're going to join around the double crochet post. And we will join with a slip stitch. So let's fold that over to get in the right place and join with a slip stitch. Now, what we work in here is we work a beginning decrease. And to do that, per the instructions, we will chain two, then yarn over, insert our hook and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And we're going to do that three times. So we yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And we'll have four loops on our hook and we yarn over and pull through those four loops. Now we need to move on to the chain two space because we're going in this direction. And if you're left-handed, you can go in the opposite direction, of course. So we will be working a regular decrease in the chain two space. And we'll start with the yarn over, insert the hook and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. We're going to do this four times for a regular decrease. So here's two, three, and four. Now we end up with five loops on the hook. So we yarn over and pull through all five. Then we're going to rotate our piece. And we're going to do the same decrease around the next double crochet post. So we do our yarn over, insert our hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And we do that four times. And we're always careful that we're getting our hook in the right place and not grabbing any yarn that we're not supposed to. We don't want to get it into this stitch. That will make it look bad. So we have our five loops on the hook. We yarn over and pull through all five and we rotate one more time and we're going to work in that last chain two space with this decrease again. So we've got that decrease section work four times. The yarn over, insert our hook and drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two. That's two. Here is three and here is four and we yarn over and pull through all five. Then we're going to join with a slip stitch in the top of the beginning decrease. So I like to count back. We have four, three, two, one. And here's the front and back loops of that beginning decrease, the top of that stitch. And we just slip stitch in there and we finish off.
So let's cut that. We want to leave ourselves a nice long tail and we're going to be weaving in all of our tails on the wrong side. Now when we join with a slip stitch, it's already down here at the base, so we can just pull that to the wrong side. Whenever we finish off, we're finishing off at the top, so we want to get this yarn in our tapestry needle and weave it down to the bottom and pull it to the back side. And then when we weave in our ends, we want to weave one end in one direction and the other end in the other direction. After you've woven both of those in, then you can trim the rest of your yarn. And when you're doing the yarn in your other sections, you do the same thing. You would have some yarn in the corner and you would weave in one direction and weave in the other direction with the other tail. So that eliminates lots of bulk. And that's how to do wiggly crochet. I hope you've enjoyed this video on wiggly crochet. It's one of my favorite techniques to do. There are so many designs that you can do in wiggly crochet, so have fun with it. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and happy crocheting to all of you. Can you, I would like to leave my hands right here. How did that get? It got knotted. Because